small business can be tough at the best of times, and in many cases it doesn't take a lot to tip the balance sheet into the red. As Newcastle businesses battle through a boom of inner city construction, they're turning to each other to survive. Local traders getting on with business, leaning on each other for a way forward. There's no silver bullets there, but we're hoping that all of it will, you know, come together to, to, to make somewhat of a difference to businesses. As revenues drop by as much as 50%, support workshops, the latest effort to help keep doors open, as Newcastle now works with all tiers of government for assistance. We're not talking loads of money, but it will help those small businesses that are living, you know, literally week to week. And so does peer support. Esther Barrow and Beck Bowie developed a social media campaign Hello, Newey East, the result of traders with nowhere else to turn. We couldn't see what else, what other opportunity there was, so we created this social media program for ourselves to help those people. But in business, cash is king. Sure, the city's got to change and evolve and develop, yes, but it doesn't have to be at the cost of the businesses that have already invested so much of their time and livelihood in this, in this area. Which is why they're asking, how did it get to this? Issues they say wouldn't exist with transparency and communication. How can you spend $650 million without having a concept plan that you can share with the people that you're building it for? That's just beyond me. Despite the frustration, the message remains one of resilience. People will survive, they will struggle through, but it will be different and there will be attrition. Stephen Mount, MBN News. An early education centre like no other will open in Newcastle West next week. The $4 million Go Kindy in Hunter Street shows how a multi-level city building can be transformed to embrace the outdoors, thanks to some extra help from artist Mitch Rzewski. We thought that the city as a group needed to be complemented with quality childcare. Our idea was to provide something that would reflect that growth and the excitement that was happening. Complete with a dedicated car park, it has the capacity to cater for 106 children aged between six weeks and six years old. Still to come, Donald Trump scolds Germany at the NATO summit. Superb three-seater, 
The 100% leather Dalston was $31.90, half price $15.95. $15.95, the next scarlet level sale. It's Christmas in July at Domain, with 60 months interest free until Monday only. Treat yourself to the latest home appliances, entertainment, computer technology and more, with a massive 60 months no deposit interest free. Hurry, 60 months interest free at Domain ends Monday. Last night we broadcast a report of a man charged over a serious attack on two people in Jindabyne. That report included vision of a man and a woman who were wrongly identified as supporters of the accused, Matthew Williams. This was incorrect. The people depicted were in no way associated with the accused. Nine News sincerely apologises to the people depicted and regrets the error. He has a habit of getting world leaders offside. And now, President Donald Trump has taken aim at German Chancellor Angela Merkel. The pair met at the NATO summit in Brussels. Mr Trump turning a spotlight on Germany's ties with Russia. Big smiles and firm handshakes, then came the grenade. Germany is a captive of Russia because they supply, they get rid of their coal plants, they get rid of their nuclear. They're getting so much of the oil and gas from Russia. The US president demanding to know why Germany pays billions to Russia for gas, then asks America to defend it from Russia. You tell me if that's appropriate, because I think it's not. It was a breakfast meeting, and Trump owned it. Many countries uh, owe us a tremendous amount of money from many years back, where they're delinquent. As far as I'm concerned. After their standoff at last month's G7 summit, the most powerful woman in the world came prepared for battle and returned serve. I've experienced myself a part of Germany, controlled by the Soviet Union, and I'm very happy today that we are united in freedom. We can determine our own policies and make our own decisions. Donald Trump came to Brussels in full confrontation mode, painting US allies in Europe as freeloaders and demanding they pay more for defence, especially Germany. Today, he moved the goalposts, suggesting the target should be doubled to 4%. That these countries have to step it up, not over a 10-year period, they have to step it up immediately. From fighting words to a show of unity, by the afternoon, Trump and Merkel seemed to sort out their differences, for the cameras at least. We have a very, very good relationship with the Chancellor. We have a tremendous relationship with Germany. Especially given Mr Trump's meeting with the Russian president next week, the US president says he expects those talks to be easier than NATO. If his approach here is anything to go by, the next stop on the US president's tour of the UK is sure to be highly eventful. He'll hold talks with the embattled Prime Minister, Theresa May, amid large-scale protests planned across London. After a day of talking tough, some balloons to lighten the mood. Just enough to hide the simmering tensions of an alliance supposed to secure peace and order in Europe. Barnaby Joyce and partner Vicky Campion have been cleared of misusing travel entitlements. An independent audit found the former Deputy Prime Minister and his former media advisor did not break the rules between May 2016 and February this year. The report did find a substantial change in Mr Joyce's travel to Canberra last year, but was satisfied with his explanation. The toxic tug-of-war over Australia's energy policy was on full show today, following the competition watchdog's damning report into our electricity market. And while politicians bicker, Australians are stuck paying huge power bills. Rock by the rock. Australia is getting a lesson in reading. As politicians see very different things in the same vast report on a broken electricity market. Some in the coalition say it backs their push for new coal-fired power plants. We need to get baseload generation into the system, and that needs to be underwritten by government. Others are happy to have that fight. The latest stunt from the government is to say maybe we'll look at paying for new coal-fired power stations, withdraw the subsidies that are going to renewable energy, and potentially lay out new subsidies for new coal-fired power stations. But the competition watchdog didn't back subsidising coal. Picking technologies is a very bad idea. Rod Sims did urge the government to go guarantor for new generation that can be delivered on demand. That could be coal, it could be gas, it could be hydro, it could be wind and solar attached to batteries. We've got to maintain reliability, 
That's, that goes without saying. So you've got to be able, when you click the switch, the lights have got to come on. Even allowing choice in power generation is an offence to some. If you're so-called technology agnostic, then you're committing a climate crime. The watchdog does say it's time to dump all subsidies for rooftop solar. The benefit of that subsidy has gone to those who put the panels on their roof. The cost of those subsidies is paid by people who don't have the panels. But Labor isn't convinced renewable energy deserves greater support because it is going to become the most affordable form of energy. Well, there you go. The lesson is there's no sign of an end to the energy wars. Chris Ullman, NBN News. A woman has been found face down in the snow in the ski slopes at Perisher, apparently in cardiac arrest. Members of a ski patrol tried to revive her, but she couldn't be saved. They say there was no obvious sign of a crash, but they don't know exactly what happened. Now it's over to Gavin Morris with a quick look at our weather and Gav, some extremely cold nights on the way. Yes, that's right. A lot of cold air is getting pumped north into northern New South Wales and reaching southern Queensland. Very clear skies overhead. And it's going to be quite a long run. These cold nights will produce some very nasty frost, particularly over New England, the Tablelands, the Upper Hunter and the Northwest. And it's going to continue all the way into next week. And clouds are going to become a bit of a rarity. All of your local weather details headed your way real soon. Thank you, Gav. Ahead in the news, a trip to the beach goes horribly wrong for a man in Queensland. And welcome aboard two stories of floating luxury real estate. This, between the hustle of work and the chaos of home, the only alone time left, no demands, no distractions. Just equal parts quiet. And breathtaking. New Mazda 6. This is quality time. So 